Hey, I am Jelle, and I recently hit my head, which led to a new fundamental understanding of the universe. I realized that after making games for over two years, I've outgrown the real world. So get ready for a game with imaginary numbers. Now, you're all smart people, I'm sure you know what I mean. But if you don't know what imaginary numbers are, well, here's the basics. I have before me two carrots, and I want to fill each part of this box with a piece. To calculate how many I need, rather than just counting every part, I can multiply the sides to get the total amount. This is called multiplication. And even better, when both sides are the same amount, I can just multiply the same number twice. And we don't even need to write it down that way. We can just write a cute little 2 above the number. This is called squaring. Now, what if we know how many total holes there are in the box, and we want to know what the lengths of the sides were in the first place? Well, for that, we, humans, invented the inverse of squaring, the square root notation. I now know exactly how to lay out my parts to make my pie. We can take square roots of just about every number. The answer doesn't even have to be a whole number. But, and here comes the catch, what if we want to take the square root of a negative amount of carrots? Can you think of a number that when we multiply it with itself equals a negative number? No? Well, me neither. So, what did the smart people say? You know, we'll just uh, take the negative side apart and calculate the rest of the roots and uh, ta-da! We have a solution times the square root of negative 1, but uh, that's just a... Oh, and you know, let's just replace the root with the letter to make it look like we solved it. Congratulations! You're now an expert in imaginary numbers and one pie richer. Bon appetit! Oh, and if all of this makes no sense to you, well, don't worry. They're all made up anyway. Now, why would I use this in a game? A common way to visualize complex numbers, a normal number plus a number of eyes, is on the complex plane. It looks like a normal 2D plane, but instead of X and Y, we use the real part on the X axis and the imaginary part on the Y axis. So, we can create a game where a character moves along the complex plane. But in, in practice, this doesn't really look that special. It just looks like a regular 2D plane, for now. The exciting parts come when we remember what the imaginary part stood for, the square root of negative 1, and what we can do with it. If we multiply two positions on the complex plane, weird things happen. Like when we have our character at a random position and we multiply its position with i, it's like we're rotating our character 90 degrees from the center. Amazing! If you look at the numbers, it makes perfect sense. Well, you know, you could also just uh, rotate the character 90 degrees, but this is way more fun. We can multiply our position with all kinds of different numbers, and each results in another rotation. We can even scale our multiplication to move further away. Are you seeing where this is going? Fun fact, most 3D programs use a similar thing to describe rotations in 3D. Quaternions, a 4D equivalent to complex numbers. No one really knows how they work, but they are much better at describing rotations and don't suffer from the terrifying gimbal lock. So you could use this as a stepping stone to understanding the mysterious world of quaternions. Hmm, maybe that's something for another video. Speaking of videos, let's get back on track. We're here to make a game after all, and who better to help us through this than our favorite explorer, the little astronaut. Since we're only going two dimensions this time, let's give him another update. He can keep his new helmet, but he's going to need his antenna back to keep in touch with the real world. I always get happy when I can do a little more drawing. Okay, so we've got our character, but what is the game going to be about? Well, let me explain. Alright, so our little astronaut is lost again, and he has no idea what he's doing. All he has is a little trippy device that lets him teleport to other locations, through these strange orbs. And all these orbs have numbers on them. It's almost like the numbers on the orbs are the numbers his position relative to the orb will be multiplied by. What a coincidence. It is your task to help him find his way back home with the help of these special orbs. Alright, I know what to do. Let's get to coding. I made a special complex multiplication method that I can use all over the place. I made the balls. I made a little 2D character controller, very basic, and set up the teleportation. I made sure you could only teleport to a place you could see and wasn't inside any walls. You know, to prevent this from happening. Ooh, ah, 
Oh, and then I did some more coding to make the camera and some game logic. And before we all fall asleep from the boring code, I wanted to make some more art. When I was thinking about an art style, I went through the history to find the perfect time period where these imaginary trippy worlds would feel right at home. Oh yeah, love and peace. Chill out, bro. Let's go back to the 70s. I got started on the tile palette and, well, kept going for quite a while actually. Man, I forgot how much work that is. You would think it's just a couple of variations, but no, it's more like 20 variations. You have this flat part, the edges, the corners, the outside corners, the inside corners, the slopes, the ledges, the ledges above the corners, the flat parts, under flat parts. The list goes on and on and on. Luckily, I could use Unity's rule tile system, which meant I could set up some rules for which tile to use in what case. Perfect for quickly recreating levels. Well, more, kind of quickly, you know, it's still a lot of work, but you know. Ooh, and I also made some streaks that I can draw to show where the player can go. But there was still one vital thing missing. I needed to sell the transition with the orbs more because when you teleport the whole world flips around and all the orbs become their inverse this way you can easily teleport back and forth hmm oh i know time to make some fancy shaders using shader graph i made a shader that can shift the color or more accurately the hue to whatever value i want let's test it out shall we whoa don't do drugs kids and now with the click of a button all the colors are inverted without changing the black and white values of course to keep everything nice and clear. But I wanted more. I made another shader for the target graphic. You need to know where you're going to end up after all, and just a flat image is just boring. I started with a hologram shader, but that didn't really fit the vibe of the game. So I gave it a little 70s makeover, and now it's perfect. Rainbows everywhere. Look, I can change the amount of colors, and the, and the scale, and the speed of which the bars move, and, the, and even the width of the bars. I feel like a shader magician. I also gave the astronaut some life with a bunch of animations. Because you can also carry the orbs around, I made a separate animation for that, where I swapped some sprites around to give the animation a mix of tweet and frame by frame animation. Very cool. I made a cute little teleport jump. Oh, and when you finish the level, it's time for a big flex. And when you fall, your character starts wiggling around. All right, the game looks pretty trippy, but I think I can go further. What if we start playing with the screen itself? I learned some tricks with my previous game, where I rendered the camera image on a plane and used another camera to capture only that plane. This way you can easily render like these chunky pixels. But it also allows me to have a game screen inside a game. With this, I can do all kinds of crazy things, like move the view around or even rotate it. Whee! Try to beat the game like this. Ah, good luck. Of course, I had to rewrite how the screen casting worked on the game view because I'm no longer looking straight at the screen. Luckily, I did just that when I made my eye tracking game. Check it out if you have it already. I mean, technology is just unbelievable. I'm glad I went through all the trouble back then so I can just steal it from my past me. Basically, I cast my mouse onto the plane and calculate the screen coordinates as if the plane is the screen, using some inverse rotations and offset magic, you know the drill. This even works when the plane is squashed. Alright, enough playing around. Time to play around and make some levels. These teleport orbs can be whatever value I want. So I had a lot of freedom when designing my levels. I had some fun ideas, like you have to find your way to the other side of a wall, or you have to match the amount of rotations, or you have to time the orbs just right and these enough. But I had to make a clear distinction between the orbs that can move and those that can't. I'm pretty sure if you could move every orb around, you would be able to break the level pretty easily. Luckily, I can just put them in the ground. Problem solved. I finished everything off with some decorations. I added a start and end screen. And I made a nice tune to go with the game. Yeah. With all of that, the game was ready to go. I wish you all the best of luck and uh, don't show up. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss the next video. And you can play the game right now on itch.io. Well, have fun and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.